Yo, once again it's on. Back at you one more again, Real Kids TV. In the house like kitchen sinks, you heard me? So I'm sitting back reflecting as I typically do from day to day. And I'm thinking about all the situations that I've been in, all the crazy scenarios that I, me, myself, taking full accountability, place myself uh, into, if you will. Now, before I get into uh, this afternoon's video, if you will, understand that I'm the self-proclaimed Mr. 30 Minutes of Battle. <laughs> Meaning that any story, any video I drop is guaranteed to be at least 30 minutes. So if you're on your way to work, you're at work, you don't feel like being there, co-workers talking your head off, getting on your nerves. You're on your way home from work. You need to laugh. You need to cry. Let's say you just need to lay down for, you know, an hour or so, take a nap. Or you're trying to go to sleep at night, depending on whatever time you listen or view this video. Or you're just in the mood for a good old-fashioned truth. Keyword being true. Penitentiary slash real life story slash experience. This is the channel for you. So if you like the 8, 9, 10, 12 minute videos, absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. But over here at Real Kins TV... It's 30 minutes of battle. So with all of that being said and wrapped up into one big, big, big nutshell, there is a message. I'm thinking about a situation that I was into, and I tell people all the time, I wasn't no gangster out here in these streets, man. Have I done some gangster things? Yeah. But I'll never talk about those things on this uh, platform or any other platform for the simple fact that I was fortunate enough to... Uh, uh, have gotten, not necessarily gotten away because I believe that you ultimately pay a price for anything that you do. So I'll just say that I was in a situation to where I didn't get caught up for that specifically, but ultimately I paid the ultimate price. But the majority of the time I was on some white collar type of uh, time. I didn't want to hurt nobody. I didn't want to take from an individual now, we're going to take from these banks. We're going to take from, from these major multi-million and, and billion dollar industries. Because after all, that's no money to them. This was my mind frame. This was my thinking at the time. I don't think that way now because wrong is wrong. Despite who you take from, wrong is wrong. Counterfeit game. That was my thing, man. That was my thing. Counterfeit money, counterfeit checks. That was my M.O. Now, understand that anything that I talk about, I've already served my time for. I would never get on here and speak about something that I never got uh, arrested or, you know, charged with or what have you. Anything that I've talked about, I've already been, you know, paid the price for. It. Had a situation, man. We was doing our thing, man. We had a hookup on some fake IDs. I learned how to get fake IDs. Real life fake IDs. I'm talking about driver's license. Uh, student IDs, because a lot of times when you go into the bank, they want two forms of ID. You got the license, you got a student ID. Two forms of ID that really, really uh, will work pretty much wherever you go. Social security cards, all of that. Ran across the individual, because like you meet people. You see what I'm saying? So initially I didn't know this person, but a friend of mine was very good friends with this individual that I'm speaking of. He worked for a major bank. He was like high up. And basically what he did was anytime that a payroll check came through, he looked at the check, processed the check or rejected the check. Now, if he processed it, he sent it through. It goes to the bank with the stamp approval on it. And the banker makes the, you know, they make the funds available. Uh, I guess it's at their discretion, if you will, as quickly as far as how quickly they want to make the funds available. So, for instance, to give you all a, a general idea of exactly what I'm speaking of, or an example, rather, you deposit a check into the account. The account is sent to wherever it's sent to. This individual sees the check. He does his research on it, whatever that, you know, he may do. If it's a good check, he's going to send it through, stamp of approval, send it back to the bank. Everything's cool as far as account numbers and, you know, things of that nature. And the bank will say the funds are available immediately or they may put a one day hold or a two day hold on it. Sometimes three, just depending on who you are, how long you've had your account. Back in the day, long, long, long time ago, when we was doing our thing, we used to target credit unions. And again, I don't recommend anyone ever do this. So I'm only telling this story to get you all to understand that 
things that seem to be uh, uh, easy, it's not. It's not anything as far as what you think. As far as you know, easy and, and getting money easily and fast and illegally. No. So really, I'm trying to get the people to not do this. So that's the reason that I'm telling my story. I have to be very, very specific and clear about these things. Credit unions were the easiest places to target because credit unions are a lot more customer friendly. See, when you go into a bank, a big bank, Chase Bank, Wells Fargo, uh, Bank of America, you know, these are major, major banks, U.S. Bank. These are major banks to where you have like people that have hundreds of millions of dollars. They deal with these banks, athletes, you know, NBA, NFL, what have you. So they're not quite as customer friendly opposed to if you go into your local uh postal workers credit union or state credit union or what have you you see what i'm saying because it's a smaller amount of people that they deal with and it's on a one-on-one -on -one basis a lot of times and they know your name you know their names and oftentimes you don't even have to show your id because it's just that's the type of uh customer friendly you know uh, atmosphere if you will that they've created now this was like i said many moons ago you go to the credit union you deposit a check five six thousand dollars money's available immediately ain't no two three day hold on it there's no calling to verify the funds no you're a customer we believe that um you're doing the right thing so when you deposit this check even if it's a handwritten uh personal check funds are available immediately now once i learned that i was like whoa are you serious see at the time i had to i was a criminal i was a i had a criminal uh uh mind frame criminal thought pattern i was everything was wow we can really really get some money so we got to the point to where we send people in the credit union they open up an account under these ids that they have put five dollars in the account ten dollars in the account the accounts open immediately as they're walking out of the credit union they stop at the front desk yes i would like to uh cash this check um they might have a fifty six hundred dollar check Actually, I'd like to deposit $300 and, you know, withdraw the rest. They go in, they look up your information. <laughs> the technology then was totally different. They didn't even understand that you had just opened this account up five minutes ago. They just seen you as a member. You had a member number. Now, come on, Kins. I don't know about that. Hey, that's just what it was. i like to deposit uh, $300 and withdraw, you know, $5,300. Two or three minutes later, handing you an envelope, got the 5300 in it, you out of there, you gone. Wow, it was that easy? Now, you know that when you deposit a check into an account, it's going to take a few days before the check comes back uh, insufficient funds. So let's just say you do this on a Thursday. Man, this is Thursday. You go back and do it again on a Friday. It works again Friday. Well, heck, you go again on Saturday morning. You do it again. You didn't just stung for fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars in a three-day span, and it's like, whoa! I cannot believe this. So then you get another individual to go to another location and do it, and that was just, you know, kind of how things went back then. Again, I've already served time for this. The more you do things, the more money you get. The more money that you want. So it's like, man, if I can put five in there and they go, shoot, man, let's put 10 in there. Well, hold on, man. We may not want to do 10 because anything over 10,000 IRS and so let's just do 9,800, 9,700. Did that work. Boom, boom, boom. Clockwork. Same thing. So we was getting a lot of money. We was just having to go to three, four, five different locations and a couple of different uh, credit unions to do that. As I mentioned, there was this individual and he worked for a major, major bank. I didn't know him personally, but my partner knew him. As my partner was giving him the game, telling him what was going on, he said, man, y'all nickel and diamond, man. Let's go on and do this one good time, get your money, and get on out of there. What's he talking about? He wants to talk to you on the phone. So I talked to him on the phone. We got burner phones, dummy phones. He's giving me the game. Look, what y'all need to do, set up this account. This account, once it's set up, do a couple transactions, you know, on a regular basis, make it look good. Let it sit for about 60 days. And then once you do that, get at me. 
We're going to come up on some major money. All right, cool. That's exactly what we do. Have the account set up, put like $100 in it to start the account. We, you know, do, you know, a couple little deposits, withdrawals, deposits, you know, activity on the account. After 60 days, we get back with dude. What's up, bro? You, you know, you said get back with you. Yeah. This is what you need to do, man. I want you all to go in and deposit a check for two hundred fifty thousand. Two hundred fifty thousand, man. Two hundred fifty thousand. Hold on, bro. You said two hundred and fifty thousand. That's a quarter of a million. Two hundred and fifty thousand. I process all the checks. All the checks that come through at two hundred fifty thousand seems major to you, man. We see two point five million dollar checks, ten million dollar checks, eight hundred thousand dollar checks. So this two fifty that that seems so major to you. I see it on a daily basis. As long as the numbers is right, as long as the, the routing number, the account number, the check sequence, everything is right, the signature matches up. If everything is right, I can process it through. Just break me off 30000 After that, man, y'all can have whatever. Man, it's 250 Gs, man. 250000 So we got an individual that, you know, he had set up the account. Actually... The individual that had set the account up, something ended up happening to him. So he couldn't go back in to make the deposit. So what we did was we just had uh, another person go in and make the deposit. They didn't even ask you for your ID when you made a deposit back then. Because this, this is my account. I like to make a deposit. So and during the process of all of that, we were getting another ID, driver's license, uh, uh, social security card, and the college ID. For the individual that was going to go in and make the withdrawal from the account. Hopefully you all follow me. Anybody can go into the bank and make a, a deposit. You don't even have to show ID most of the time to make a deposit. But to get that money out of there, you have to have an ID. Now I keep saying bank, but I'm speaking credit union because this was a credit union. The drop was made 250 G's. We knew that the check was good because the individual that worked at this big bank, he had told us everything is cool. But it's still at the discretion of the bank to decide when we want to make these funds available. They look it up on the computer. The account's been in good standings for 60 days. Never, they've had, uh, you know, activity on the account. It's never been any, uh, you know, anything, you know, fraudulent or anything of that nature on the account. It's going to be a two-day hold, sir. Two-day hold, two-day hold. Just as I suspected. So it wasn't a big deal. Two days. I call dude up and I tell him. Y'all let me know where you chiming in from, man. Uh, where you tuning in from while I take my beverage break, if you will. Let me know. You know, ain't nothing like some good old ice water. Y'all let me know in the comments, man. Let me know what's happening. Where you, where you chiming in from? So like I was saying, two day hold. We about to get paid. We about to get pizzay. You heard me? We about to get this money. Now, this is 2024. At this point, this was, I don't know. This was well, 21, 22 years ago. That's how long ago this was. Big Ryan, I never will forget. Big Ryan goes in. And he's the individual. He's the individual that's gonna go and get the, you know, get the money. So when I say Big Ryan goes in, actually he hadn't went in at that point. But Big Ryan is the guy that was recruited to go in and get the money. And I got a partner, and we're just gonna call him Fred. I don't want to use his name. And at the time he was my partner, but you know, things happen or what have you. Fred. Fred knew Big Ryan. I didn't know Big Ryan. Big Ryan was Fred's partner. So he's the one that's running everything down to, uh, you know, Big Ryan or what have you. And Big Ryan's with it. He's thinking to himself, shoot, I just wear a hat. You know, I don't have anything to worry about. I'm just going into the bank or to the credit union, rather, to withdraw the money. Now, you know, you can't go in there and just withdraw 250 G's. You got to be strategic about it. Over time, you can withdraw it. But you can't just because the, the guy that was at the big bank, you know, the corporation, he said it's going to be at least probably a month before the check comes back and the accountant sees it. And he understands, like, hold on, where did this money come from? 
So you all have ample amount of time to continuously go in and withdraw the money however you want to withdraw it to make sure I get my 30 G's. Cool, no problem. We wait the two days. Two days passes. Big Ryan's gung ho. He's ready to go into the uh, credit union to get that money. Get a lot of it. I'm telling Fred, I'm like, hold on, man. Hold on, hold on. Before we do that, let's just make sure. Nah, they said two days, everything's cool. I understand that. But let's just make sure, man. They can say a lot of things. Let's make sure that this money is really, really legitimately there. We don't know if there's been, man, I called dude. It's at the bank. He said everything's cool. Just calm down, bro. Just, just calm down. Just calm down, man. We're going to get the money if it's there to get. But let's just make sure we're not walking into a, you know, it, it's not a trap. Big Ryan calls the, the credit union. Y'all was calling to see how much uh, I had, uh, you know, available. They're telling him the money's not available at that point. It had been two days. The two days that they said the money's not available. It was only like maybe, you know, 150, 200 bucks available. It's far crap from 250,000. Damn, I wonder what's going on. We're on the phone with dude. Now, it's kind of weird because we're on the phone with him. He's not really saying too much over the phone. We speaking in code. So the communication kind of got thrown off a bit because he's saying certain things that he's expecting uh, us to understand and vice versa because we're on the phone. So we don't want to just outright be like, yeah, man, what's up with the, the 250000 You see what I'm saying? Even though it was a dummy phone, a burner phone still, you never talk over the phone. How we, you know, this was our thought process back then. Something's going on, man. They said two days. I wonder what the problem is. So we wait till the next day. Ryan calls in. They tell him that the money's available. 250000 and, you know, X amount of hundreds or whatever. The money's there. The money's there. Oh, everybody's hype. Everybody's turned. 250 G's. It's been approved. Everything is cool. And we can go get this money out of the account. Still me. I'm like, nah, man. I'm happy about it, but I'm just not quite sold on the situation yet. Even though that's Fred's partner, this dude doesn't even know me. It's like, uh, let's just let's just hold up, man. I don't want to send him in there. Fred's ready to send him. Ryan's ready to go. Every just hold up, man. hold up, hold up. I'm talking to Ryan over the phone, Big Ryan, but again, he doesn't know who I am. He just hearing my voice. But Fred is kind of the guy that's in the, you know, the, the middleman. I say, give me about 20 minutes. I call the, uh, I grab one of the checks that was attached to the uh, checking account. Because like the, the business account, the account that he opened up, it was a business account. And so, you know, he had checks to it. I had the uh, account numbers for the checks. So let's just say somebody tried to write me a check for 600 bucks. I called the credit union up. I say, hey, how you doing? Uh, my name is such and such. I met, uh, you know, I have an individual here that's, you know, attempting to present me a check for 600 bucks for a purchase. Could you hold just a second, sir? Put me on hold. They come back, you know, four or five minutes later. Sir, those funds are not available. And then we would strongly suggest that you don't accept any future payments from this account. Those funds are not available. That's all that we can tell you. Understand that these funds are not available. She's adamant. The teller's adamant that these funds are not available and you should not take one of these checks. It's essentially what she was saying without being able to say it. I call Fred. Hey, bro. It's over. It's a wrap, man. What do you mean? It's a wrap, bro. It's, this ain't. No, it's over, man. But, dog, Big Ryan called and they said that the funds were there. I understand what Big Ryan called and said and what they told Big Ryan. But I didn't call too low because I had called another location and tried to verify, like, a smaller amount, like $500. It didn't even matter because it should have been $250,000 plus in that account if the funds were available. Called two different locations. They've clearly told me, do not accept a check from this individual. Those funds are not available. He's talking to Big Ryan. 
Big Ryan's thinking about this money. Big Ryan's about that bread. I can't even lie. He was he he wanted to go get it. Fred's telling him no. Allegedly, supposedly, he was telling him no. I'm not even gonna say allegedly. Supposedly, he's telling Ryan, nah, don't go get this money, man. Leave it alone, man. Just we'll we'll get some money somewhere else. I mean, it's a dead issue. Big Ryan's looking at the little app, or it wasn't even apps then, but he's looking at the account. Uh, on the computer, whatever it was, and he's seeing 250 something thousand. He calls the bank back again. They figure out that it's him because, you know, obviously they know it's him. He's the, you know, he he opened the account up. Oh, uh, yeah, the funds are available. Um, how much were you thinking about taking, sir? Well, I understand that, you know, I'm, I'm going to purchase, a, make a major purchase. I wasn't willing to uh, withdraw 30000 Yes, yes, those funds are available. They became available this morning. Um, what time were you thinking about coming? Uh, I was thinking about coming in about 4 o'clock. Okay, uh, is there a specific location that you wanted to go to? Well, ma'am, no disrespect, but why are you asking me, like, what location, what all? Oh, no, 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 it's nothing like that. It's just that when you do a major withdrawal like this, it's, it's kind of different, you know, from taking out $3,000 as opposed to $30,000, $40,000. So, you know, we need to make sure that the funds are there and, and that it's not a long wait when you go in. So that's the only reason that we're asking you what time and which location. Made Big Ryan feel comfortable. Big Ryan calls uh, Fred back, hey, man, I'm going to get this bread, man. Fred calls me. Hey, bro, I'm telling you, dog. I'm telling you, do not. Do not go into that bank, man. It's a setup, man. If he goes into that bank, it's a setup. All right, man, I'm going to tell him, but I don't know if I can stop him from going. Hey, all right, man, but don't, don't say that I didn't tell you all. Don't say I'm telling you. Big Ryan decides to go into the bank. He's going to get that 30, 40,000, even though it's way more, but on this particular day, it's going to be thirty, forty thousand. 40000 I forget the exact amount. He goes in. They have to tell him to have a seat. They go to the back. We're getting the money, sir. Hold on just a second. He's in there about 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Next thing you know, he tries to get up and walk out. He tries to walk out. They've already locked the doors in the bank. Detectives come. They done already called the police. The detectives come. It's a setup. Money was not available. None of the bread was available just as I had anticipated. They knew that this check was no good. $250,000 check. And at the time, we didn't know this, but looking back, I'm able to tell the story. They take Ryan down, big Ryan down to the uh, uh, Secret Service office. They don't take him to the regular interrogation or the police department. No, he goes to the Secret Service office. Secret Service office. He's the big boys, feds. They want to know the whole skit. They want to know where you got these uh, uh, check numbers from. They want to know everything about the situation because we know, we already know that it's not just you. Big Ryan, the only person that he can really point out is Fred. Fred's one of his best partners, if not his best partner. He's talking to me on the phone. He knows of me, but he's never really directly dealt with me face to face. And he don't have a clue who this individual is that works at this big bank, this big corporation. He's willing and dealing with the police or whatever. Ryan, big Ryan never had a record, never been in trouble before. He want to implicate his friend, his uh, friend Fred. So what he says is, I'm willing to work with you all. Somebody set me up. Somebody told me to do this. I don't know the individual. I just, I know who it is, but we've spoken over the phone. I have a pretty good idea who it is, but I don't, we've spoken over the phone and I recognize his voice. He's the one that, that put me up to it. He's the one that gave me the check. He's the one that did this, referring to me. I've never talked to this guy about that. I have, but I've never seen him personally. Again, everything that Fred did, he's making it seem like I was the one that did it because he didn't want to tell on Fred. The detectives, they bite. They let him out. He don't even go to jail. He leaves the Secret Service office. Contact us and uh, we'll contact you in, you know, next few days or what have you, whatever. Let you know what to do next. He gets out. When he gets out, he doesn't tell Fred about the whole situation, about the whole scenario. Because he's only gone for a couple hours. 
And when he went, even though Fred had told him, supposedly Fred told him don't go, it wasn't really out of surprise or anything like that. You know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't anything that was out of the norm for Ryan not to call him back like, or, you know, the next day or what have you. Basically what I'm trying to say is a couple of hours had passed. Fred didn't hear anything. And Ryan had been at the Secret Service office. Big Ryan had been in the Secret Service office. They let him go. The next day, he ends up calling uh, uh, Fred. And he's like, hey, bro, I just called the bank again. And these funds are available, man. Let's go get this. I'm, I'm going to go get this money. Fred didn't want nothing to do with it. Fred's like, nah, bro. I ain't fooling with that, man. I'm not fooling with that at all, dog. I told you, don't go. Do not go. Big Ryan, he's working for the people now. He was already adamant, but now he's he's working for the people. So he's really, really adamant about going. I end up talking to him on the phone. I got a dummy phone. I got a burner line or whatever. So one of them track phones or something like that, I done probably bought at the a dollar store for $15, $20. He's telling me he's going to go get it. Hey, man, I'm, I'm, I'm going. I'm going to get it. I'm skeptical, but I'm thinking about all this money. And, and, and I'm like, man, well, look, man. After you go, I'm going to meet you here. After you go in, I'm going to meet you, you know, at this location. Are you sure you're going to be there? Man, I'm going to be there. This is me talking. I'm going to be there, man. Again, I believe that Big Ryan knows who I am, but we just never spoke directly. He just probably recognizes my voice because I had seen him like a time or two. But nothing. I never really had an in-depth conversation with him. So really, I don't know if I was just being, you know, a little cautious, too cautious or what have you. But I felt as though he knew who I was. He goes back. But the whole thing's a setup. Big Ryan goes back. Meets me at the spot that we're supposed to meet at. He calls me up. Hey, bro, I, got the, I told you. I told you it was good, man. I got this money, man. He goes to meet me at the spot. Problem is, when he goes to meet me at the spot, it's not me. It's Fred. I tell Fred, hey, man, the dude got the money, man. He already got it. Everything's all good or whatever. But I'm not going to meet him. I'm not going to meet him, bro. I guess Fred, at this point, once he hears that that Big Ryan got the money, he's like, well, shoot, I go. I go now because I know that everything's all good. When he goes, when, when Fred goes to meet Big Ryan at the spot, police are all in the area. Undercover cars. It's over some checks now, a check. Not dope, not uh, robbery, not guns, not check. They got detectives for every unit. I hope you all do understand that. Credit card unit, check unit, child support unit, whatever. A crime is a crime. Fred meets Ryan. Ryan, Big Ryan is acting real, real funny. He's acting really, really particular, like like just, just strange, just weird. Every time Fred would go to say something, Big Ryan would cut him off. See what we didn't what what uh Fred didn't understand at the time, Big Ryan had a wire on. And the whole area was surrounded by police. So anytime if, if Fred was gonna be like, man, what the money what he'd cut him off. There was a signal, I guess, that he had to give to the police or whatever, and they were gonna swoop in, swarm in or what have you. That never happened. Because Big Ryan kind of gave, uh, you know, Fred a signal, like, you know, kind of how you look down. And it was a wire. And so Fred wasn't slow, so he picked up on it. He was like, yeah, man, I was just meeting you here, man, to figure out, you know, thought we was going to go, you know, work out or whatever, you know, whatever he talked about. But he quickly, he didn't say anything else about money. He never even had an opportunity to say anything about money because Big Ryan was expecting me to be there. Not his partner, Fred. So being that Ryan cut Fred off from saying anything to implicate himself, Fred was able to drive off freely. Now the detectives, they pissed at Ryan. You wasting our time, our man hours, our overtime hours. We, I thought that it was going to be Ken's. He didn't know my name, so I'm going to just, you know, use him. I thought that it was going to be Ken's, and it wasn't. This individual that pulled up here, he didn't have anything to do with this. I just, it's just a, a, a coincidence. He just happened to see me. He don't have anything to do with this. couple weeks passes i don't really talk to him too much at this point because it's like 
I don't really, something's not right. If you done got all of this money or whatever, and I ain't got none of it, Fred, I'm not really hearing from Fred too much. Big Ryan done went and confronted Fred and told him, hey, this is what it was. Man. Told him exactly what it was. The whole thing was a setup. The whole thing was to get me. To get me? Why would he be trying to get me? I ain't never even dealt with this dude other than talking on the phone with how would he... Man, I don't know, bro. It's just what he said, man. But you ain't got nothing to worry about. You didn't give him nothing. You ain't, you haven't done it. He don't have you on no wiretaps or anything like that. But I'm like, why would I be, why would my name be brought into this scenario? I never even seen him. I never seen him a day. I never talked to him. Bro, I don't know, man. It's just what he told me, man. So if I was you, man, just lay low. You ain't got nothing to worry about or whatever. I'm at the house one day. Well, I'm not at the house. I'm on my way home to the house. One of my cousins at the house. We had like a big old house we was renting. Had a lot of cousins. Cousins, hey man, the detective's here. The detective? Yeah, the detective's here. He want to talk to you. Hello? Yeah. He wants to know where I'm at. I'm on my way home. Why? What's, what's the problem? He's saying that he needs to speak with me. I'm not one that's really going to run and go on the, the high, you know, hiding and things of that nature. So I'm like, oh my God. I just went to the bank. Never will forget, I just went to the bank. I withdrew like $3,500 for something. I don't even remember exactly why I withdrew the money. I get to the house. The detective, like my cousin said, is sitting in front of the house in his car. He tells me, hey, get in. Nah, man, you step out of the car. I ain't getting, nah, man, what, what? Get in for what? Nah, you step outside of the car. He's talking about the scenario. He's trying to ask me, this is your opportunity to really, you know, uh, uh, tell your side of the story. Otherwise, you know, we're going to charge you. Charge me with what, man? Now, I'm young to the game then. I ain't never really been in no trouble. So I'm not even hip to not even talk to the detectives. I'm thinking that I know not to tell on nobody, obviously. And I know not to tell on myself, even more obvious. But I'm not really hip to not talk to the detective. I just kept saying, man, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have no idea what you're talking about, man. I ain't did nothing. I ain't talked to nobody. None of that stuff. Next thing you know, put your hands behind your back. They take me, lock me up. They charge me with the charge because based on what Ryan had said. So here I am. I'm in jail. Big Ryan's not in jail. Fred's not in jail, but I'm in jail. I go to a couple court hearings or what have you. I get out on bond. They, you know, I didn't have a record, so they had reduced my bond. I get out on bond. I don't even remember what, what my bond was. Probably a thousand or two. I get out on bond. As the court case uh, proceedings, if you will, get deeper and deeper, closer and closer to trial, you get to get the evidence that's presented against you. Big Ryan had told a total lie. A total lie, man. Again, he didn't want to use his best friend, Fred. So he said that he put my name in the place of Fred. So everything that him, uh, Fred, that he talked to Fred about, he was saying Ken's. So the people came and got me based, solely based on what Big Ryan said. See, I'm in a Commonwealth state. And a Commonwealth state is way different from other states because you don't really have to have any concrete, hard evidence. They can come and arrest you just based on what an individual said. Yeah, he did it. He was the one that put me up to it or whatever. So now here I am facing the case, man. On something that, did I have something to do with it? Yeah, but not in the capacity in which they said that I had something to do with it. I'm going back and forth to court. I really want to do something to Big Fred. Not Big Fred, but Fred. Big Ryan, I ain't really want to do anything because he's doing what he's going to do. He's trying to get out of the situation. I don't like it, but I really want to do something to Fred because I feel like you the middle man. Why you ain't charged with nothing? How am I charged? And I ain't never, I ain't never gave this man a check. I never did none of that stuff. I never even talked to this guy face to face. How would he even know that it's me over the phone that he was speaking with? Because you told him. Yeah, you remember dude that was here last time that you met? Yeah, we was playing the game. Yeah, yeah, him, that's my dude. He's a solid dude, man. You told him. They never would have even known 
Big Ryan wouldn't even have known who he was speaking with over the phone, even though he may feel like, you know, I recognize a person's voice. I've only talked to you twice in my whole life, and it was never about this. It was always about the game or music or something like that. You and I never spoke about doing any criminal activity face to face. So I feel I really feel some type of way about Fred. Now I'm going back and forth to court. Fred and I, we not talking at all. I'm lightweight in my mind, plotting against him, but I'm like, nah, let me wait and see what happens. Ain't no way they can do anything to me. I ain't, I don't even see how I'm arrested. I don't know nothing. I never implicated myself. I never admitted to knowing this guy. I never, I don't even know, you know, there's nothing they can do to me. He can say whatever he wants to say. He has the account. He was the one that went in. He was the one that got caught. You gonna say I made him do it? During the proceedings of the, uh, the entire case, Big Ryan becomes ill. Big Ryan becomes very, very ill. So his court dates are thrown out because he's in the hospital. That's not my partner. That's Fred's partner. Unfortunately, and I never want to see this happen to anybody, Big Ryan didn't end up making it. He had some problems with his liver. He's a drink a lot. And he wouldn't go to the doctor the way that he was supposed to. Because Big Ryan was a heavy dude. He was probably about, I don't know, six foot, six one. Uh, the times that I seen him, the two times that I seen him, he, I know he was weighing in at 350, white dude, bald head dude. Uh, so I know he was about 350 at least, 360. And he liked to drink. And so when this this illness, you know, happened to him, if you will, it just so happens where it happened during the time, you know, the court proceedings were going on. He was in the hospital for a while, and uh, they had him hooked to the machine. His liver had just failed all the way. These people decided to unhook him. Big Ryan didn't make it. Well, at that point, once Big Ryan didn't make it, they kept trying to offer me a plea deal. Man, I don't know what y'all talking about, man. That was my, every time I'm telling my lawyer, man, I don't know what they talking about. They had no choice but to dismiss the charges against me. And it's just one of those things to where, you know, to this day, Fred and I are not cool. Do I see, when I see him, are we cordial? Are we, yo, what's up, man? You know, I'm not really one that's gonna, you know, hold a whole lot of grudges. Uh, I'm gonna bury the hatchet, to be honest, for the most part. But I just know that my own partner, man, Fred, was really trying to throw me under the bus. If you get caught up, man, don't mention my name, bro. Don't mention my name whatsoever. So do I think that Fred was like, hey, it's my dude Ken's, man. He's the one that I do think that he did that. Now, I don't think that he did it to the point of saying, okay, if you get caught, say Ken's did it. Not me. Say Ken's did it. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. You see what I'm saying? He put it in a way to where he's saying, well, shoot, man, if it looks like a duck, it quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, then nine times out of ten, what is it? A duck. Just make sure you don't say it's me. So who else could he say? Kins. And, you know, him and I, we got into it pretty bad about that. I had some choice words for him. I had some choice words about Ryan. Because at that particular time, what happened with him, man, I wasn't caring nothing about none of that, man. F you and F Ryan. Good, that's what happened to him. That's how I felt at the time. I'm not saying that it was right. I don't, I regret saying those uh, hateful things. But at the time, that's how I felt. Man, you're trying to send me to the penitentiary. You're trying to send me away from my kids, my family, whatever, over something that we told you not to do. Told you not to go in there. Told you. But you decided to go in there anyway. And then it's like, oh, well, he made me do it. Uh, uh, I didn't know exactly what I was doing. I knew it may not have been on the up and up, but I was just trying to help a person out. He seemed like a good guy and he had a business and, and no, no, you wanted that money. That's why you went in there. And typically that's what happens. People get in the courts and that's what they say. The detectives know they lying, but it don't matter because the detectives don't want the Ryans. They want the Kansas. You see what I'm saying? And, you know, I see him from time to time because we have mutual friends. And, you know, it's cordial when I see him. What's up, man? Out of family or whatever. That's what's up, man. I'm going to holler at you. And that's, that's it to this day, 20-something years later, man. 
You can't trust nobody in this game, man. In these streets. It don't matter if it's checks, credit cards, dope game, uh, uh, robbery, uh, theft. Whatever the case may be, you can't trust nobody. Because nobody wants to go and do jail time. Who do you all know that once is looking forward to doing time in the pen? I can't think of one person. I can think of all type of people that's trying to say and do anything that they can do to get out of doing time. But anybody that's like willing and just waiting to go to prison nah i don't know anybody like that man. and ultimately like i said you know they were trying to get me to take a plea deal i never took a plea deal the case against me was dismissed it never should have been a case against me in the first place now it was dismissed i think is is it with prejudice i think there's with prejudice or without prejudice one of them they can bring back up i just don't remember which one it was fortunately for me that case was never brought back up um you know r.i.p big ryan even though big ryan did what he did big ryan just got greedy man they told him that 250 g's was in that account and like most of us man i'm trying to figure out a way to go get that but i'm already three four steps ahead of the game yes um my name is uh, uh franklin uh, joseph and i have an individual that's uh presenting me a check for 627 dollars and i just want to make sure the check is good before i uh accept the check okay sir could you hold me typing in the numbers oh no sir that check is no good and i'd highly recommend that you don't do business with this individual. that tell that told me everything that i needed to know right there they wanted big ryan to come into the credit union so that they could hem him up they just didn't know exactly what time that he was coming. But nevertheless, they still ended up hemming him, and him up. It, those are the type of situations that I used to go through as far as dealing with this, this counterfeit game. See, a lot of people think that I was just going out there writing checks or out there presenting counterfeit to people, putting money in the dice games. No, no, I never did any of that stuff. Never. Never. That wasn't my forte. That wasn't my stilo. Man. I looked like a check writer. I wasn't going out writing no checks. Or presenting fifty dollar bills or hundred dollar bills to the set. No, you want ten thousand dollars worth of counterfeit, man? Give me two G's, man. You can have ten grand. Man. You want uh, uh ten thousand dollars worth of checks, man? Give me twenty five hundred, man. And you go and do it. I'm not going with you. I'm not doing any of those things. You see what I'm saying? I'm not writing no checks. I'm not doing any of those things. But again, everything that I did, it all caught up with me because I ended up doing over eleven years. In the Kentucky Department of Corrections. Anytime you think you're getting away with something, you're really not. It just seems as though you are at that particular time. But you reap what you sow. And you pay for all the things that you've done. So just keep these things in mind, man. Keep these things in mind when you're thinking about doing the wrong thing. Hopefully you liked the video. Feel free to comment. Definitely share. Subscribe to the Chizan if you're not already subscribed. Be sure to hit that post notification. So anytime I bring you this, this, this action and this, this heat, guess what? You're amongst the first to receive, man. Once again, I buried the hatchet. Didn't know the dude. Seemed like a decent dude, even though he tried to throw me under the bus. But nevertheless, R.I.P. Big Ryan, man. Real kids.